Hi everyone, I'm Vincent Rajkumar, Professor of Medicine at the Mayo Clinic. I'm really happy to answer questions today that were sent to me on MGUS, smoldering multiple myeloma and multiple myeloma. Uh, sorry that I'm not there in person. Uh, first questions were on MGUS. Um, basically, I think um, we want to classify MGUS into the low risk, intermediate and high risk types. And more, almost half of MGUS would be low risk. And by low risk, I mean small monoclonal protein, less than 1.5 grams, IgG, and a normal light chain ratio. Also patients with light chain MGUS who have a free light chain ratio less than eight, and small IgM MGUS. These patients, you can, if there's no other red flags, then I think you can safely uh, omit the bone marrow biopsy, omit the bone survey, and just uh, recheck the monoclonal protein six months later. And if that's okay, then you can uh, check them again only if symptoms suggestive of myeloma or related disorder occur. By doing that, you save uh, a lot of uh, trouble, a lot of expenses, and unnecessary investigation because these patients have a lifetime risk of getting a, a serious plasma cell disorder of only 2%. All the other patients we check uh, in six months and then once a year thereafter, we also do the baseline bone marrow. So again, you don't need a baseline bone marrow, bone survey, uh, or annual follow-up for small IgG MGUS with a normal light chain ratio, small IgM MGUS, and light, free, and light chain MGUS with a free light chain ratio of less than eight. In which patients do you test troponin and nt proBNP? I don't usually check it routinely. Uh, if you have some concern for amyloid, sure. What type of imaging tests for MGUS? Bone survey is fine if you have the capability CT survey. Soluble BCMA in prognosis, we have not checked and I don't do that. Uh, relatives, in general, we are not screening first degree relatives uh, or the general population. However, I think um, uh, black patients who already have one affected first degree relative or anyone else who has two affected first degree relatives, I'm beginning to offer screening for those patients. That will be a very small subset. All the others, I think we have to wait for results of randomized trials. We don't routinely check um, SPEP uh, in free light chain assay is being ordered a lot. And I think you have to be careful with it because you're going to get abnormalities. And that's why I said, if the involved over uninvolved ratio is less than eight, it's a very, very low risk free light chain MGUS. You can just recheck and follow rather than doing a full workup. Now, moving on to smoldering myeloma, we usually monitor smoldering myeloma once every three to four months. The bone marrow, I repeat only if there's some concern for progression. Do I repeat images? If there is any concern once a year, if the light chain levels and the serum protein level, um, M protein levels are stable, then I just continue to follow them. Uh, I do use the 20 to 20 risk stratification system. That is the two grams or uh, more than two grams M spike more than 20 for free light chain ratio, more than 20% for bone marrow plasma cells. Um, any two of those three, that's a high risk smoldering myeloma. Those are patients we are offering therapy with lenalidomide or Lendex uh, for about one to two years to delay progression. Um, when you're on treatment, we follow once a month or two, otherwise every three to four months. The fish abnormalities that predict for high risk would be deletion 17P, 414, and gain of 1Q. Do we rec the regularly determine circulating plasma cells by flow cytometry? Yes, we do. 
Uh, that's part of our routine practice at Mayo and high levels of circulating plasma cells are associated with an increased risk of progression. In terms of managing smoldering myeloma, I told you for high-risk patients, we are giving lenalidomide or Lendex. We also have a trial looking at Lendex versus daratumumab plus Lendex, and that will answer the question whether patients with high-risk smoldering myeloma are better treated with a mild treatment or a myeloma-like treatment. In terms of trying to cure, we are trying, but only on a clinical trial. And there's the ASCENT trial that Dr. Kumar did where you go in with all of the three, four drug regimens, but that's a clinical research thing, not outside of a trial. Questions on multiple myeloma. Uh, what do you do when the only indication to treat is free light chain greater than 100? If the patient has free light chain ratio greater than 100, they are at high risk of progression. Um, but however, make sure that the involved light chain level is also quite high. Uh, preferably more than 100 milligrams per liter, and make sure that there is a sizable urine monoclonal protein. Some patients who have very tiny monoclonal proteins in the urine, you can wait and see because they may have a problem with a high ratio, mainly because they are not excreting the light chains, not because they're making more of it. But yes, we do start treatment for patients who have a high light chain ratio, more than 100, nothing else, uh, provided there is a significant monoclonal protein in the urine and provided the involved light chain ratio is involved light chain level is 100 uh, milligrams per liter or higher. Deletion 17 by fish, our labs are different. Some labs use 20% cells positive for cutoff, some use 15%, some use 50%. Uh, we go by whatever the lab considers abnormal. I think 15, 20% cells having deletion 17P is high risk. Would you consider a patient with a 1Q gain at a candidate for tandem transplant? We are not doing that many tandem transplants at Mayo, um, but if options for relapse are low, then you could consider tandem transplant, but more for patients who have double hit myeloma or you know deletion 17P rather than just 1Q gain. Now, if a patient has high risk and achieves CR with the first transplant, is they a candidate for a tandem transplant? Again, as I mentioned, we don't do tandem transplants in the US that much because we have a lot of salvage treatments and we don't find a significant benefit to tandem transplant. If the options for relapse are lower, then there is a benefit for tandem transplant and this has been shown by um, the EMN trial. And so if that's the situation in Argentina, then certainly do it, um, but mainly for high-risk patients, for patients who have got deletion 17P or double hit. What do you do in a patient whose transplant eligible achieves a minor response to BRD? As long as the bone marrow is not fully loaded, we are going ahead and collecting and doing the transplant because that's how the randomized trials were done. But if there's clear progression or if there is actual uh, significant bone marrow involvement, then you may have to use VDT pace or daratumumab based regimens to lower the tumor burden and then take the patient for transplant. Um, thank you very much for your attention. I hope I've answered some of your questions. I look forward to seeing you in person next year. Thank you.